Hi, I'm Katie Todd, and today I'd like to talk about common misunderstandings in communication. This happens so much in marriages, and I had an absolutely fabulous example that I wanted to share with you all today with some clients that I saw last week. These wonderful people have been together for 23 years, and they're hitting a bit of a stale patch. We all know about those. One of them likes to have a drink in the night. Not a huge amount, just a couple of glasses, two or three glasses, maybe four glasses every night. But the wife has been saying for a long time, I don't want you to drink that much. I don't want you to drink that much. And you're drinking every night. You need to not drink every night. He thinks, she's trying to control me. I don't want to be controlled. And he sort of goes into the teenager and he's a little bit rebellious. She thinks, if he loved me, he would hear what I'm saying and he would stop it. So he's obviously deliberately trying to hurt me. Do you see what I'm showing you here is we all have a story about what's going on in our relationship. His story was she's trying to control me. Her story was he obviously doesn't love me enough to hear what I'm asking. Neither was true. And this was what was really interesting. We're conscious of so little in our marriages. If we could just take the time to explore a bit deeper and find out where does this come from, we could heal. Now, what was really going on, and it took some exploring, was to find out why was she so reactive to the drinking. There's always a clue. Whenever you're particularly reactive about an issue, it is not just about the issue today. 10% belongs to that today and 90% belongs to some, something in your history. So we went exploring a little bit and found out about her background. It turns out her dad had died, dropped dead of a heart attack at 48, like that, no warning. He was fit, he was healthy. The only thing he did do was he used to drink quite a lot. Unconsciously, she was very frightened that her husband was going to do the same thing. He's in his 40s. He's getting closer and closer to that D-Day. When her dad died, it was a huge shock to the system. She was suddenly abandoned. There was a lot of un unhealed things there, a lot of wounds there that are still today. So for her, it was so significant. What she was actually saying was, I love you and I don't want to lose you, and I wish you'd stop drinking that much because it makes me frightened. I get nervous when you do that, that I'm going to have that same pain that I had when I was 19. The face of her husband as he sat there and heard her explain this for the first time in their 23 years was absolute shock. He had no idea, and his response was, absolutely, I'll, I'll cut down straight away from now. The interesting thing was, she was not aware that this was the real reason why she was on about it all the time and why it upset her so much. He was not aware. If she can't tell him that, how on earth is he supposed to know? And this happens both ways. The message here is, if you are reactive about something, it is not just about today. It is about something in your history and it's the long line of several things. I'll give you a very quick personal example that I'm a bit embarrassed to have to share to you. I took my kids to the show, the Royal Show, big event um, this week, and my husband was going to come along with me. At the last minute, because he wasn't feeling great and had some really big challenges and was stressed, he said, look, I don't think I'll go. I was very upset about this, in fact, quite cranky. But I knew that I had to ask myself, why am I reacting like that? And you know what? It was so stupid. I remembered when I was a teenager and my friends were all going, and they were all with partners, and I was single. I felt so alone. It was like going to the show, you should have a partner and you should feel loved. And I felt really unlovable. The last four or five years, I've been on my own, so I've taken my kids on my own. And I felt like I had a tattoo on my head. There goes a single divorced mother. In other words, she's a failure. And so not going with him, when here I am with this gorgeous soulmate, the love of my life, I wanted him to go because it would make me feel loved inside. And I only realised this when I could feel how reactive I was to it. This is my stuff. It's got nothing to do with him. And when I recognised that, I could let it go. If you feel something intensely, it is mostly your stuff. Yes, you need to explain it and explore it and express it, but realise it's yours and it has its history beforehand. And then you can let it go. It's such a relief when we finally do.